A warm welcome to Stephen Billington to the author's studio. Another wonderful actor who's recently been interpreting my words on stage. Stephen played the wonderfully dark, kind of Jekyll and Hyde character of Brian Bishop in Not Bad Enough. And I think he did an amazing job. Make sure you learn your lines. And when you think you've learned them, learn them some more. When you know them backwards, then you're probably ready. My favourite role, I wanted to play this role since I was 15 when I first read The Crucible by Arthur Miller. And I got to play John Proctor five years ago at York Theatre Royal in Damien Cruden's production. And it was, I got the best reviews of my career. It was an amazing, amazing time. Normally, I learn my lines during, for a play during rehearsal. Um, but on this occasion, Ian Talbot asked us all to learn our lines before rehearsal, which actually I found really freeing. So I'm going to do that from now on, because what you get to do, especially on a short rehearsal period, like we only have three weeks on this, um, you, you just get to play a lot more, you know what I mean? And so you don't, you're not worrying about lines, you're just kind of, discovering the character and discovering the journey and, and playing. So it's um, incredibly freeing. On soaps, then you have to do it every evening. You go home, you, you learn your lines for the next day. And that's a kind of different kind of shallow learning, really, because you forget it as soon as you walk off set. Um, but for plays, it's a kind of deeper, a deeper thing. Movies, is, again, is slightly different. But. You know, talking about John Proctor, I saw Tom Wilkinson play John Proctor at the National Theatre in, like, 1991 or something like that, and it absolutely blew me away, tore my heart out, and I left the, the theatre in tears. Goggle box. <laughs> yes, I do. I always choose a piece of music for the character. Um, so I have a bit of a listen to that and then I like to just sit quietly, especially if I've got emotional scenes coming up like I do with Brian in um, Not Dead Enough. I like to just find a little kind of solitude, a little quiet place for me to focus and just try and kind of empathise with where the character's at at that particular moment. Hunter by Björk. It's got a lot of momentum. It kind of goes boom, 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 boom. It's really kind of gives me the kind of rhythm that I think a murderer might have. Pretty much for as long as I can remember, weirdly, yeah. Although I also wanted to be, because I grew up in South Africa, and I wanted to be a game warden. I wanted to be kind of a zoologist, really. Um, because I started, I, I, when I moved down to London, I worked at the Connor and Claridge's as a trainee manager. Um, and I started meeting all these amazing actors. Uh, Gregory Peck, Gene Wilder, um, Dirk Bogard, um, Alec Guinness, people like that. People who I really kind of revered. Um, and I remember having a conversation with Alec Guinness, because I was on reception at the Connor at the time when he arrived. And, um, and he said, you know, you should just have a, give it a go. Go to drama, find a good drama school and, and see how it goes. And it's on his advice that I, that I did that. Hmm. Being a freelance actor, you, your year plans itself for you, really, in my experience. I, whenever I try to plan, the plan always goes awry. Like, I never book holidays because... I can guarantee you, the moment I book a holiday, I get an acting job and I can't, I can't go on it. So I tend to like go on holiday at Christmas time when there's no work around anyway, or just after I've finished a big job. Like after this job, you know, I've been working for solidly for six months, so I'm going to Berlin for a week to visit a mate of mine um, straight after this, and I'm not going to book any work for that week. Well. It's kind of the questions about your private life, really, from, you know, when I was in Corrie, you know, the journalists always want to know about your private life, and 
as far as I'm concerned, it's not their business. Um, you know, I didn't, it's weird because I didn't really get into acting to be famous. It's, to me, it's a kind of slightly distasteful side product of acting. I just like to do my work and I like to be good in my work and if people like it, fantastic. But I'm not really fond of people prying into my private life. Not, not that I've got anything to hide, but it's just, you know, it's my business. They're, they're very different. Like in terms of a process, for me, they're very different. Um, I love the process of theatre because you get rehearsals, so you get to really kind of immerse yourself in the role. And also you get to play the story from the beginning to the end in one arc um, on stage with a live audience, all of which are real positives for me. Um, but then, you know, on telly you get, you get a copy of it at the end and, you know, you get to keep it for posterity and it's always there. And whether it's shit or whether it's good, it's there on tape and, you know, everyone can see it. And so there's, you know, there's different positives. You know, I would... Ideally, I would like to do good quality work that kind of a certain number of people enjoy. Um, but, you know, occasionally it's nice to be popular as well. Thanks so much, Steve. Really great insights into the life of an actor. And I'm fascinated that you had this career change partway through your life. If any of you have had a career change, I'd love to hear about it. Pop it in the comment box.